Hello and welcome to the first video in our webinar series on the topic of orthographic projection. So in this video we're going to look at general projection systems and the components that are needed to create a projection. So we're going to begin by first of all just asking the question, what is a projection system? Well a projection first of all is defined as the presentation of an image on a surface. So the presentation of an image onto a surface. Um, a projection system then is a method or a set of rules to actually get help us to do this. So when it comes to the projection systems that we're going to be dealing with, we have three basic components. Um, each of them we can see here in our little example. Um, the first of which is a viewing direction, here represented by a torch. So a sh torch shines light in a particular direction. The second component then is an object, something that we actually want to represent, uh, here represented by our little Lego man. And then the third thing then is a screen which to project our image onto. So our screen, the graphical term for that is known as a plane of reference, sorry, or a reference plane. And there are three components. There are different types of projection systems that we can use, and we'll look at two in particular, perspective projection and orthographic projection, but they all involve the same basic three components. So how we get our image of our ob um, from our object onto our screen um, is gotten by essentially casting light. So you all be familiar with the idea of casting a shadow onto a screen. Well, if we have our torch shining in a particular direction, that's going to cast rays of light. And you can see here they are getting wider the further back they go. Well, these rays of light are known as projection lines. And what they do is they gather up the outline of our object and they cast that or project that onto a screen, giving us our, um, our image or our shadow in this case here. So this is our perspective projection. And you can see there's our image and the size of our image is larger than the original object. That's what makes this a perspective projection. So we're going to concentrate for the moment on what is orthographic projection. So the three components are exactly the same. We have our direction, we have our object, and we have our plane of reference. The only difference is that instead of the likes of a torch, we're just going to think of it just purely as an arrow, just a direction that we're looking in um, in that direction. So our lines, our rays of light, instead of coming from one single point spreading outwards in orthographic projection, our rays of light are all moving back in the same direction as our viewing direction here. So they don't spread out as they get further back. And they cast our image here onto our um, plane of reference. And you can see, because all the rays of light move straight back in line with our line of sight, the resulting image that we have here is the same size as the original object itself. So that's our orthographic projection. Just looking at the two comparing to each other, so our orthographic versus our perspective. Again, we have our three components. We have our direction, our object, and our plane of reference. As I say, the only difference being is that the projection lines are spreading out from a single point in perspective, giving us a larger image, whereas in our orthographic, they're all parallel with our viewing direction, giving us an image the same size as our original object. So there's our two resulting images. Um, let's just take a closer look at that. Here we have our perspective projection. Here we have just a 3 d object. So if we were to take our perspective, our projection lines coming from that spreading out, this is the resulting image that we'd see here. So looking at that in closer, we can see the front of the object appears larger than the farther, uh, further back corners of the object. So whatever is nearer to us appears larger than whatever is further away from us. Even though in reality, the three uh, corners are actually the same size, they all appear differently. And this is what we say, something is in perspective. For the likes of our orthographic, because our projection lines are all going back like so, we can see it gives a different type of an image. So here's our image, and you can see the three corners are all the same size. Now there are advantages and disadvantages to each system. Um, for the likes of our perspective projection, it gives a very realistic view of the object, because that's how we see the world um, through our own eyes. Um, the only disadvantage with that then is, if you wanted to make this piece, well, because each 
edge is distorted, you can't measure from the object. Whereas in our orthographic, we can clearly see that our three corners here are the same size, and we can physically measure from our drawing like that. So from a manufacturing point of view, the orthographic projection is much more useful. Whereas from a representation point of view, to get a general idea of what something looks like, maybe our perspective might give us a more realistic view. So each one, each um, projection has its own advantages and disadvantages. So what I want to look at here is just the relationship then between the components, our viewing direction and our screen. So here we have our three components looking in from the front, here we have our three components looking from above, and here we have our three components looking in in our 3D view. So when you're looking at the viewing direction and the plane of reference, the main thing is that they have to be um, at an angle of 90 degrees to each other. And in real terms, what that means is that whatever direction we're looking in at, our screen here has to be straight in front of. At 90 degrees, our perpendicular is the graphical way to say straight in front of. So you can see here's our line of sight, and that is at 90 degrees to our plane of reference. Same thing applies looking from above, we're at 90 degrees. And in real terms, what that means is that when you're projecting an image onto a screen, the screen shouldn't be tilted to forward or backwards, or shouldn't be tilted left to right. And we'll just see why that is. Say we have our orthographic projection here. So there's our outline cast onto our screen. Well, if I tilt the screen back, you can see what happens to the image. It gets distorted. It gets stretched such that the height of the um, image is lar or longer than what it actually should be. Same way if I take my image and tilt the screen left or right, you can see the image ends up wider. So if you think about a projector in a classroom, that's what we always do. We place the projector straight in front of the screen. We don't put, have it coming at an angle because that will distort the image. Um, so that's the main components to our projection systems. So to summarize that, the projecting image, you need to have three components, a viewing direction, an object, and a plane of reference to project onto. The plane of reference is always perpendicular or at 90 degrees to the viewing direction. And for orthographic projection, the lines of projection are parallel to the viewing direction. In our perspective, they're emitted from a single point spreading outwards, which distorts the image. For our orthographic, because they're parallel, it doesn't distort the image. The image ends up as the same size as the original object. So this is the first video in our series of videos on orthographic. So I hope this has been of some use to you. And um, stay watching the rest of the videos if you want to learn more. So thank you very much.